After seeing the reception my first video got about 10 moments that changed disc golf, I've decided to come back with another rendition. So many comments, so much input from the disc golf community that I'm going to be using some of those for this video. Disc golf's history is shrouded in a lot of different things that had a major impact. From the way we viewed the sport and changes in discs to systems and companies that have had their impact. In the last video I thought I had covered a lot of the major moments in the history of the game, but actually there's a lot more to remember. Let's get into it 10 more moments that changed disc golf forever. Early in the history of the sport, a precedence was set for what was to come, the disc golf rating system, but it wasn't fully accepted into the governing body until 2003. During the growth of the sport, divisions would be established by different clubs. Whether or not you won is what bumped you up to other amateur divisions, but the early crew at the PDGA wanted to establish a way for amateurs to move up and down divisions. In 1998, at the Disc Golf World Championships, eight full rounds would be played. This was the guinea pig for the rating system, using these rounds to create the system that would come out fully in 2003. This event is the reason why eight rounds is still used in the rating system we have. After being fully implemented into every PDG event after 2003, the sport of disc golf has had a way for amateurs to rise and fall as close to their competition as possible. Whether you hate them or love them, the rating system in disc golf was something that had a major impact on the sport. One of the things pointed out to me in my last video was the lack of early disc golf coverage, those who paved the way for the media in the sport that we have now. Disc Golf Planet, the predecessor to the Disc Golf Network, was the first attempt at streaming the sport, and the same goes for the early series of Clash DVD. These two combined for some of the earliest available disc golf content that we're able to look at. Without companies and brands to pave the way, we wouldn't have what we have now in the sport. As the saying goes, built on the shoulders of giants. That's what these media coverages were. They helped to establish the viewing for disc golfers around the world. Maybe one of the bigger impacts on the sustainability of the pro side of disc golf. Early history of the sport saw players unable to live off of a full income from the open divisions. A way was created for companies to distribute discs that were directly sold alongside the pros. Signature discs were runs of molds that you could buy which would directly support the player. Same goes for the much later tour series discs. These helped pave a way for professional disc golfers to make more of a living playing disc golf. Now you can look at some of the top pros and see that the money they make off signature or tour series discs is a huge part of their deal. They can make the money up front, but the best way for disc golf to grow is for the pros to sell discs with their stamps on them. By doing this, they show much more of a value to companies and how they can impact that specific brand. In the last moments video, my theory on the biggest impact in the sport was the creation of U-Disc. Everyone has it, from using the scorecards with your buddies for recording rounds, to finding disc golf courses all over the place to play. But I got so many freaking comments saying I forgot to mention Disc Golf Course Review, that U-Disc would be nothing without them, that Course Review was the original course finder. Sure, sure but it's janky. The only reason it's getting a mention is from you guys who commented about it in the last video. Now it's my turn to talk. Disc Golf Course Review is a perfect example of adapt or die. They didn't adapt, so you just took their spot as the go-to disc golf course finder. You just has so much and it feels clean. You can easily use the app, but for course review, it's like an old chat room style-esque. I don't know why anyone would use it over Udisc right now. Yeah, before, sure, we can give it its credit, but man, the glitchy pop-up ads on the website and the feel of it, it's just not my vibe. Thanks to everyone who commented about it. There it is, Disc Golf Course Review changed the game forever. In all the different kinds of discs made, rubber discs certainly are on the most interesting side. Maybe not the first to do it, but certainly the first to have that rubber impact would be Vibram discs. They don't make discs anymore, but in the 2010s when they were up and running, they had some of the more expensive discs on the market. The rubber shoe sole making company would dip their toes into the creative side of the sport, paving the way for companies later on. Elevation discs, probably the most famous rubber blend discs now, you know them as the super floppy discs. Premium rubber discs from Elevation are fun to use, don't get me wrong, it just depends if they're for you or not. For the previous moments video, so many disc innovations were involved in it that I needed to make sure I showed one more side of the business when it comes to creativity. Rubber discs, first Vibram, now Elevation, they've changed the way we see the possibility of discs forever. The impact Macbeth has had on the game has been like no other. That's already established, if you're in disc golf, you know who he is. But how he got the greatest player ever may be closer than we thought. In the last decade of disc golf, Macbeth has been the number one, and Ricky Wysocki, number two. World championships are the easiest metric to determine who's a better player. Macbeth has six, Ricky has two, but it could have easily been four to four. Let me show you. A decade-defining moment would happen in 2014. Macbeth would defeat Wysocki at Worlds in a playoff. This was for number three in a row 
show, and the following year Macbeth would again win a title. Fast forward to 2019, where again Macbeth barely beats Waisaki by one shot to hold onto the title. In Macbeth's wins at Worlds, for the most part, he had to beat Ricky. In 2012, he beat him by 5 shots, in 2015 by 11. And the same goes for Ricky. When he won his back-to-back -back World Championships, Paul got 2nd place by 6 shots, and then 2nd place by 8 shots. So there are two world titles that were really close between the two of them. 2014 playoff, 2019 by one shot. If Ricky had been able to come out on top in both of those outings, we may be looking at him as the best ever since he would have four world titles. And so would Macbeth. For regular season, Ricky has the edge. For other major events, Macbeth has the top spot. But looking back at moments that changed the game forever, it might just be those two wins that established the sport differently. I grew up playing more golf than I did disc golf, and one thing that we did not have for events was live scoring. At the same time, neither did disc golf, but for me back then, I would have loved to have live scoring to check and see where I was at during a round. Some people don't want to know where they stand, and that's fine, you don't have to check it. But for the rest of the competitors, it's a really nice thing to have, especially at the end of a tournament. PDGA live scoring is super useful and just an overall way better experience than having to deal with paper scorecards. Like, come on, save the trees. Mistakes are so easily made when it comes to paper scorecards, but another nice thing about PGGA live scoring is that if you have multiple people keeping score, a mistake will notify the scorekeepers, then you can immediately address it. I'm a fan of live scoring, how about you guys? Now this is something I'm going to be covering in a lot more depth in an upcoming video, but for right now I wanted to use this as a little bit of a sneak peek. The Paul Macbeth Foundation is something in disc golf that is having an impact around the world. Established by Paul Macbeth, the biggest name in disc golf using his platform to help build disc golf courses around the world, impacting underdeveloped areas where a new population can be introduced to the disc throwing sport. This is not just a one-off name use. Macbeth and his very skilled team alongside a board of directors are using their development skills to cover a very wide variety of demographics. They have been growing, impacting areas, and creating new outlets for different youths to enjoy the sport. Like I already said, I will be covering this in depth soon, but for right now, the Macbeth Foundation and its moment of creation has set out a new path for a lot of individuals, who previously would never even heard of the sport. When Macbeth signed a million dollar contract, it changed everything. It was a very big moment for the sport, especially for the top ranked pros. But when Simon Lazad announced that he would be leaving Dismania for MVP, nobody was safe. Loyalty, years and years with the company, didn't seem very grounded anymore. Now I'm not bashing the guy for leaving his old company. I think you gotta do what is right for you, but the last player I thought was gonna leave their brand would be Simon. He had helped build this mania into the powerhouse that we know it to be. He had helped put them on the map, so when it all went down, another moment shifted for the highest level of professional disc golf. Simon's impact on the sport of disc golf has been incredibly heavy, but now, he shifts from a higher level established company to the new, upcoming brand of MVP. It was a moment in the sport that I will never forget. The future of disc golf is changing, and that was by a moment which began this year. Jomez Pro, the leader in disc golf media coverage, was bought out by the Disc Golf Pro Tour. For right now, nothing changes. The 2023 season is going on according to plan, with Jomez Pro doing coverage a day later, as always, for both MPO and FPO divisions. This was a big moment for the sport. It's just that we don't quite know all of the impact yet. Changes are going to come, I can guarantee that. With the Pro Tour and ownership of post-produced as well as live, some things are going to have to change. I'm not going to sit here and speculate about those changes, but I'm just saying there's going to be something coming. But for so many years, Jomez has been running post-produced disc golf coverage, which blows live disc golf coverage out of the water in views. They are the biggest media company in disc golf, and now the Disc Golf Pro Tour has ownership. It was a deal that may have been made this year, but looking forwards into the future, this moment could have the biggest impact on the sport of disc golf. It may change the way that we, as fans, get to view the biggest and the best moments disc golf has to offer. It will change disc golf forever. Thanks for watching guys, make sure to like and subscribe, make sure to check out the first video I made about moments that changed disc golf forever right here. Comment down below what you think of the moments in this video, which of them had the biggest impact on the sport. Alright, we'll see you guys next time, cheers.